So, let me ask a question. What brings you joy at Christmas? Some of you might point right up here and say, well, this is one thing, and that's certainly true for me, uh, seeing two granddaughters up here on the stage. It <laughs> doesn't get much better than that, but it does get better than that. What brings us joy? Last week I asked, what, how is your piso meter? Is it like here, or is it you know, peaking? How is your piso meter? Well, let me ask another question. How's your joyometer? Is it here? 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 I heard one Scrooge in the room. How's your joy made? What brings you joy? Uh, we talk about joy at Christmas. We we heard that said and mentioned a couple times, even from up here on the stage. What brings you joy? We've been in a sermon series, an Advent series, called The Promise, and we're looking at promises of God. We talked about hope, that uh, Christmas is a message of hope, and Christmas is also a message of peace. And today, I do want to talk about joy, many promises uh, about Jesus that were in the Old Testament. Remember, the Old Testament was years and years and years before the New Testament. Matter of fact, there's a space of time between the last book of the Old Testament and the first book of the New Testament, about 400 years. So it's a long time ago that prophecies or predictions or tellings of something that was going to happen in the future were told. And they were told with amazing accuracy. And I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago that some people, the people that have trouble believing in this story, they read it and say, it's just too incredible. When they go back and look at the prophecies and they say, well, let's just see how that works out. And they see how accurate, how specific are. And they say, that just couldn't have happened accidentally. And, and so for some people, that's, that's something that really uh, works for them. So... Uh, I'm going to retitle the message today. I'm going to call it Zachariah and Elizabeth's Pride and Joy. You ever, you ever say about your kids, they're my pride and joy? My grandkids are my pride and joy. My grandfather used to say that uh, about us. Uh, I know it's hard to believe, but <laughs> pride and joy. And Zachariah and Elizabeth, you know, there's quite a little uh, story with them uh, about not being able to to have something they really wanted. They wanted what? A child. A child. They, not, not a savior. They just wanted a child. Just a child. But they couldn't have a child. Well, let me back up a little bit. Since I'm talking about joy, this is something I read this week in my own just personal reading. In the Old Testament, not, not really a, a prophecy about Jesus, but just about joy. He said to them, go on your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet wine and send portions to everyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord and do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions to make great rejoicing because they understood the words that were declared to them. Now, the story here is, they hadn't read God's word in a long, long time. Remember, the Jewish people were exiled. They were taken into slavery. They were taken to other nations, and they, they lost the religious leaders. Who, and they, at this time, they discovered, oh, look, here's some dusty old scrolls. Let's see what they say. And it was the writings of the Lord. And they started weeping, and they started crying because uh, they realized that they, that they were sinful when they read the words of the law, they said, oh, no. But then the word said, and they repented, and, the, and then the, the, the word was, no, don't grieve any longer, but rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. That was kind of my preparation uh, coming into this. You know, the things that bring you joy, you tend to share with others, don't you? I've heard Sam come in and say, let me show you what I got. I've heard Ken come in and say, let me show you what I got. And others with various things will come and say, let me show you something I'm joyful. Here's a picture of my child. Here's a picture of 
whatever. When, we, when something brings us joy, we tend to share that joy with someone else. God shared his joy. He shared his joy just in announcing the joy. He shared his joy. It's like, look, Jesus is going to be born, but before that, somebody's going to come and announce that Jesus is born, and before that, I'm going to announce that the announcer's coming. Because it's such a big deal. It's such an exciting thing. He shares his joy with us. God gets excited to share hope and peace and joy and love with all of us. You know, when you have good news, you kind of want to announce it, don't you? Don't you want to announce when you have good news? Look at Facebook. You see lots of people announcing things. Surgery went well. This happened, this happened, this. Announcers, what a great job an announcer is. They have a fun job. From North Carolina, at guard, six foot six, Michael Jordan. Announcing is a great job. That was John the Baptist's job. He was announcing. Well, let me make just a few points here this morning. Point number one, a baby brings joy. Somebody say amen. amen. I saw a lot of cameras out here a few minutes ago. Come on. A baby brings joy. We're overwhelmed. Well, most people are over, overwhelmed. They're, it's exciting. It's happy. I remember we were doing it. Not everybody, though. There are some people that are not. I remember uh, years and years ago, probably 35 years ago, uh, there was a baby dedication, I think. Jody remembers details on this kind of stuff. And one of the ladies, they're, they're, everybody's talking about their babies and what their babies were like. And I don't know where she says, yes, he was an ugly child. <laughs> and it was like everybody's jaw. Yeah, he was all like hairy and wrinkly and, and red. He was really, I mean, I thought, oh, my, what am I going to do with that? It was like, <laughs> Jody, do you remember that? <laughs> it's kind of one of those things that sticks in your mind. But for most of us, for most of us, uh, a child is uh, so important. Uh, Faith Hill has a song, A Child Changes Everything, that I find a very beautiful song. We're overwhelmed, especially when there's a special connection. My baby is special. So there's an announcement, and the announcement brings great joy. Just like reading the law brought great joy, the announcement of this baby by the word, in the beginning was the word, the word, the word was God, and the word was, the word was flesh, the word was God, that, that beginning in, in John. This baby brings joy, like the reading of the word uh, brought joy. And Isaiah sp uh, spoke about a coming gift, uh, again, hundreds of years before. How do you announce, how do you announce a child? I'll tell you what, I, I know one couple that when they were going to announce the gender of the baby, they had a paintball gun, and they had pink paintballs and blue paintballs, and in front, in front of all their friends, the guy lined up, and he found out by the color that she shot him with. <laughs> Can you believe that? John, did the welts ever go away, or... Are they Seven days. <laughs> Women often feel they have to repeat themselves so we understand, all right? <laughs> Here's what it says in Isaiah. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall be became level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A prophecy, an announcement about the announcer who was going to announce Jesus. And, it's, and it says, 
He's going to make the way straight. He's going to make it flat. In other words, it's not just for a certain class or type of people. The, this, what is coming, is for all people, irregardless of walk of life, uh, status in life. It wasn't just for an elite. And this person is going to prepare. Preparation is a key. If anything is going to be successful, don't you think preparation is important? Are any of you hosting Christmas? Is there any, is there any preparation that's involved by somebody in the family? Andrea's here this morning. I was going to use you before I knew you were going to be here. Andrea's masterful. That's Kristen's mom. Uh, we always get invited, which is really nice. Continue doing that, please. And there's, like, food everywhere. You know, get, if, you want, if, if you want something, it's there somewhere. And, and, but it didn't just appear. Somebody worked really hard to make that happen. Preparation is everything. God is a master preparer. Everything is prepared in advance. Uh, and preparation is a key. Well, let's go to the New Testament. Let's talk about a man named Zechariah. That's kind of where I started. He is a priest. <laughs> he has a tremendous lineage that goes back and back uh, in, in the priestly line. Uh, he's in the temple burning incense. People are praying outside. And this is what it says in Luke uh, chapter 1. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing in the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and he fell, and fear fell upon him. And the angel said to him, don't be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear a son, and you shall call his name John. What would your response to that be? And remember, you're like 100 years old, all right? Okay. And you will have joy and gladness. Child changes everything. And many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine. Or... And we're not talking about Jesus here. This is the preparer. This is a word about the preparer, a preparation for the preparer. Um, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to, their Lord, to the Lord, their God. And he will go before them in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to wisdom of the just and to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. He's got a big job. By the way, let me just, some people call this chapter in Luke, well, in Luke, <coughs> in a bigger sense, uh, the joy chapter, or the joy book. Let me just read a couple of the scriptures here. It's a little bit of an aside. Uh, Luke 144. For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Luke 147. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Luke 158. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. Luke 210. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, that will be for all the people. And, in the, and toward the end of Luke, Luke 24, and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Something in there ought to stir something up inside of us that says, yes, this is the season, this Advent season, Christmas season. Uh, there's reason, cause to be joyful. The angel speaks to him. He's gripped with fear. You know, it often happens. I've tried to imagine what this would be like. You know, our angels were very cute. But there's something in Scripture about the appearance of an angel, their size, their power, that just scares people to death. And how many times do they say, fear not? Their first words are, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And in this case, don't be afraid because your prayer has been answered. What a, what a great message that that is. <clears throat> You're going to have a child. He's going to be a special child. He's going to bring joy to many. He has a special job. So um, 
this idea that a, ch- a child brings joy. When you think about a child, when you think about the presentation here this morning, and you just say, wasn't that great? They were so cute, all of them. Hi, Dad. It was so great. <laughs> it was great. That, it just brings joy, doesn't it? When you think about a child bringing joy, remember that John brought joy. When you think about John bringing joy, think about the joy that Jesus brought to the world and continues to bring to the world. Number two, it's a joy to prepare others to experience the Lord. Uh, our, Our Marcello over here, he went off shouting the good news. He started kind of flopping. (laughs) But he left spreading that good news. I don't know if you remember from an old musical, a song, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Anybody remember that? Yeah, if you're old, if you do. (laughs) Kristen remembers it. She probably did it in a musical somewhere. (laughs) You know, it's really easy to get yourself in trouble up here. It it is. It's really easy. Preparing the way, being the announcer, as I said earlier, uh, is a joy. And joy is in short supply in our world. Listen to the news. See what you hear. Um, But we still carry a message of great joy. And don't lose track of that in the middle of all that is spinning uh, around. Jody sometimes will come home uh, from her work and will have an opportunity to pray with somebody. Now, she doesn't tell me who it is. We, we, we keep the lines uh, about that. She's a therapist, so uh, there's a confidentiality thing there. But she will say, one of my clients prayed today to receive Jesus. She shares that it's joyful. It's joyful. Preparing the way is joyful. Now, only one thing can stand in the way of that. Let's see what that is. And Zechariah said to the angel, remember the angel has just said, you know, don't be afraid. Good news. Your prayers are answered. Going to have a special child. Zechariah's response is, how do I know this? How am I going to know this? Perhaps you don't realize, I'm old, I'm I'm speaking for Zachariah now, not myself. I'm old, and my wife is old. Not, I'm speaking for Elizabeth, not Zachariah. Speaking for Elizabeth. This is the angel's answer. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, You're going to be silent. (laughs) Unable to speak. Not only is he going to be silent, he's going to be unable to speak as well. Until the day when these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. Has anybody else ever doubted? It's easy to believe when everything's going right, isn't it? When, when everything's going perfectly. But it gets harder when things aren't going right. For Zachariah and Elizabeth, things weren't going right. Nothing looked like they could have this child. And when it was announced by the angel that they could, he wanted proof. And the angel basically said, and I'm going to quote a great man now. His name is Mac. Shut up. <laughs> It's an inside joke, okay? It's an inside joke. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her. And they they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they would 
have called him Zechariah after his father. But the mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, We need some input here. We need to help you name your child. There's nobody in your family by that name. Why would you name him that? And then they went to the father. They didn't believe her. They, they made signs. Inquiring what he wanted. You know, Jody can do sign language. Every now and then she t- she'll talk to me. She'll go, and I have no idea. Her and her mother used to do that, which made me nervous. You know what? They made signs to his father, inquiring me what what he wanted him to be called. This is a sidebar. But why did they make signs to him? Because you can't speak doesn't mean you can't hear. Every now and then, you know, somebody who has a handicap of one type will say, uh, you know, they're blind and somebody will be shouting at him. Well, do you? And they'll say, they'll, it's like, well, I can hear fine. You know, <laughs> don't you have to? What they wanted the child to be called. They made signs of the father. And he asked for a writing tablet and he wrote, his name is John. And they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue was loose, and he spoke, blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the country of Judea. And all who heard them (coughs) laid them up in their hearts saying, what then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. Wow. Joy. Great joy. It's joy having a child. It's joy preparing others to receive the child who became uh, the Savior, was the Savior of the world. And I have one more point. Our joy, our joy, we, we say, you know, it's joy to see our children up here. It's joy, we have joy this. Our family's going to be together. We're not so blessed. We're not sure who's showing up when. You know, Christmas time, it can be all over the board. Uh, for some, they've lost people in the last year. It'll be the first Christmas without somebody. And so it can be all over the board. This is my last point to us today. Our joy comes from the grace of God. That's where it comes from. John's name in Greek means graced by God. He was graced by God, or Jehovah has been gracious. And it speaks a lot about who John was. Another song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. A baby changes everything. All the relatives, all the relatives celebrated. The whole whole area preparing the way for the preparer. Even that was a big deal. But our joy, at the end of the day, there's lots of things that bring us joy, but our joy comes from the grace of God. If we depend on anything else, we'll be disappointed somewhere along the road. So our, our, our joy, because God is so gracious to us, just like he was to John and Elizabeth and many, many others, our joy comes directly from the Lord. That's our first avenue to seek joy from. It's really easy to find our main joy in something else. Yes, I'm excited when family can be together, and I'm excited when somebody gets healed, and I'm excited when a surgery goes well, and I'm excited about all those things, and I'm happy about that. But my main joy comes from the Lord. And if we stay anchored there, it'll be a lasting joy. I want us to pray together today, and uh, I'm going to ask if you're able to, if you would stand with me as we just uh, commit these thoughts to the Lord. A special baby brings special joy. It's a joy to prepare others, and our joy, our joy comes 
directly from the grace of God or from God. Would you bow your heads? I know there are many that are fighting various things. Um, you may have some things that are very joyful at Christmas and other things that are not. I had, uh, one of my friends who uh, I've known since 1970, 51 years, uh, lost his father this week. Another friend that I've known the same period of time is fighting cancer right now. Those are difficult things. And, and, and looking at a Christmas, when we want everything to be perfect, sometimes it just isn't perfect. So would you bow your heads and close your eyes? And if, if you say, you know, Pastor, that's, I've got something like that, and I'm, I'm reaching out for that joy, having a little trouble finding it, I want to pray for you this morning. Would you just slip your hand up so I know who I'm praying for? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You can put your hands on. Thank you. Lord, we're reminded today that uh, you are our only real hope. You are our only real peace, and you are our only real joy. And Lord, I pray that everybody in this room and in the hearing of these words today would remember to look to you as the source of joy, the source of strength, the source of hope, the source of peace, the, hope, the source of love, and to keep our eyes focused on you first. We can't f find fulfillment in anything or anybody else. It's in you, Lord. And this Christmas, um, we may have our feelings going one way, our feelings may be going another way. We may have feelings that are mixed. But Lord, I pray that in the middle of whatever, that at the center of that, at the point of that, that we would find the joy of the Lord is our strength. And may we find that anew this Christmas, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.